got to wait till that countdown finishes, right? Uh, it's so good to see you all in worship here this morning. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, I want to say welcome. We are so glad that you are here. Um, I know there's someone nearby who will be welcoming you um, one-on-one, but just know that we are so glad you're here. If you're uh, worshiping with us online, we want to extend a special word of welcome to you as well. Um, you are a part of this worshiping community today. Um, whether you are near or far, um, we are worshiping God together this morning. And so I invite you to check in with one another there in the chat. Becky Bond is in the chat with you this morning. Um, you are community within yourselves as well. So check in on one another and greet one another. Um, if you want to share any prayer, joys, and concerns, you can do that as well. Um, if you grab the bulletin in the back of it, you'll notice a place to register your attendance. Um, I invite you to do that. You can tear it off and put it in the offering plate. Um, if you, especially if you have any updated information, that's a great place to put that, um, and we welcome it. On the back of that, there's a place for prayer, joys, and concerns, and again, as I always say, you get to decide how broadly you want that broadcast, whether it's just um, within, with me, uh, as a, a, confidentially with me, or with our prayer team, or with our larger praying community, so um, just check whichever box works. Um, this morning we are talking about, so we've been talking about how a weary world rejoices. That line from the hymn of O Come, O Holy Night. Um, a weary world rejoices. And I don't know about you, but our world just feels weary these days. And some of us feel weary for whatever reason. Um, we've talked about how we just allow ourselves to experience and honor that weary. Last week, um, if you were following the Advent devotional, um, while we didn't get to talk about it here in worship because of the children and youth nativity, it was about one of the ways that we um, rejoice is finding connection with one another. Um, and so I know coming here is a great place to find connection, connecting with one another online. All those different ways help us fight that weariness. And today, um, we talk about allowing ourselves to be amazed. And so as we come into worship this morning, I invite you to allow yourself to be amazed with what God does. It has nothing to do, I don't, you're not being amazed with me, but with what God is doing um, within these walls and beyond them. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we breathe in your spirit. We breathe out all of those things that keep us from centering our worship on you. God, this morning we come recognizing the places where you amaze us in our lives and opening our eyes to where you might amaze us next. We pray your blessings upon this time of worship. Amen. I invite you to stand for the call to worship. Our God can part the sea. God can bring water from a rock and provide bread in the desert. Our God can walk on water. He can heal the sick and turn water into wine. Our God sets the stars in the sky. God hears our voice when we cry and is closer than our own breath. There is nothing our God cannot do. Let us stand in awe. Let us worship God with wonder. All right, I ask y'all remain standing as we, we're going to sing a couple songs here. We're going to do them back to back this time. We're going to start off with Trading My Sorrow. I'm sure. 
We had a little confusion on that liturgy, so I'm going to let Jim read that last liturgy of the Millennium.
much shorter than this microphone. Okay. Today's scripture comes from Luke, chapter 1, verses 57 through 66. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he has to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. That confusion came in as that Jim was expecting to read a part that said all up there, and it just kind of threw everything off, and it is all good. We lit that candle of joy, and we recognize the things that bring joy. So I find about our ushers forward. I'm not going to give the whole sermon away, but one part of it, how joy ultimately leads to gratitude. So as we experience joy during this holiday season, the joy of the Christ child coming, the joy of all the things that represent Christmas, it leads us into gratitude to God, thanksgiving to God for coming as Emmanuel, coming in human form to this world, to be here, to experience what we experience, Show us just what it means to be so connected with him that we can bring that, just share that joy with everyone else. And so this morning, as we prepare to receive this morning's offering, I invite you, as you reflect upon those things that bring you joy, just to reflect upon the gratitude that comes with it. Because when we give our offering to God, it is out of gratitude. Will you pray with Gracious and loving God, we bring you joy. As we consider the joy that you bring into your lives, we also consider how thankful we are for you and all that you do. And our hearts overflow, God, and we can't contain it. So we pray that you will receive these gifts, transform them into mission and ministry within and beyond these We pray all of this in the name of the Christ. Amen. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns
please stand as we sing the doxology. Whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power of lives. Praise the Spirit. Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Invite the children to come on up for children's time. wonder. So today we're talking about being in the moment. What's being in the moment? Christmas? I want to share with you something that amazes me. I don't know why, but I have for a good long time now been amazed at spirals. And you see them in nature in so many different ways. In fact, Christopher has got this book. She's right. All right. Let me try that again. So there are spirals throughout nature. And Christopher got this book when he was little. And you can see all these places where spirals are. You see them in shells, right? And they're these perfect spirals. And even when, like, a hedgehog or a hamster, they throw, go into a spiral, you see spirals in um, seahorses, thank you. Um, these fiddle ferns that kind of just curl right up there, right? This has been on my screensaver recently. Snails, you see that spiral? But did you know they're also found in plants, like this plant right here? Is this perfect little spiral. Um, the ram's horns, the the sunflower there, even spider webs. They're all spirals. Hmm? Yeah, the elephant's trunk when it spirals up. And what's amazing to me about these spirals, I'm going to read it here in the back for it because it's just easier to do that. Spirals are fascinating. They are patterns and math everywhere in nature. The nautilus shell expands at the same steady rate of growth, forming an equilangular into spirals. The microscopic DNA inside our cells, the tendrils on a grapevine, twist into a three-dimensional spiral or the helix. The number of spiral rows of florets and sunflowers or scales on a pine cone, bumps on a pineapple, they all follow, it's called the Fibonacci sequence, but it, it, it's math, and they're all exactly the same. And what amazes me about that is God's attention to detail. Who would have figured this out? Right? And it's just amazing to me. And they're beautiful. And, and I look at it and I see God's creation and I see that God cared that much about the center of a flower that God must care as much for me, right, and for you. So as you look throughout nature and you see these spirals in places, remembering our creator God and being in and when we're in awe and amazement, you know what then comes, hap happens? We find joy. We find things that give us joy in our life. And joy is different than happiness. Joy is something deep down. It's okay. Happiness, it happens. There are things that make us happy day to day. Joy is deep down. But today we lift that candle of joy. The pink one. It's special. I don't know why it's pink. Everyone asks. I don't know. But that's the tradition. The pink one is joy. And we remember the joy that Christ brought. Okay? Here we go. 
Dear God, thank you for bringing joy into our lives. For all the ways we see you around us in nature, in the people we see, and the love we feel. We love you, God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning. We come to you in the busyness of this season with parties to go to and shopping to do and baking and decorating and all the things that seem to come with getting ready for Christmas. We find joy in these moments. And yet there are also times, God, where our weariness still shines through. And God, we pray and know that you are shining through that to offer us hope, to offer us peace, to offer us joy. God, we pray for those in our world who have a really hard time seeing joy right now. Whether it is in their own personal lives, whether it is because they are in the middle of a war. God, we pray. We pray that in the midst of all these hard places, that you will help them know that you are there. God, we pray for people within our own community who are struggling. Whether it is health, whether it is things that have happened, things that have happened in our family, or or whatever it is, we give you thanks for the space to come and receive that joy. God, we lift up those within our community, within Parker County, who aren't sure where their next meal may come from or where they will sleep. We pray for our children in our schools, for our teachers. Keep them safe. And we give you thanks, God, for those kids who teach us what joy is. God, in the silence, we lift our own prayers up to you. God of hope, peace, joy, and love. Hear our prayers as we pray in the name of the Christ child, our Father, who taught us to pray. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll sing this next one. We fall down, the altar will be open. We lay our crown at the feet of Jesus. 
greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. He is the It was 1999. It was my very last day of teaching kindergarten before I was leaving to move to Atlanta to start seminary. And several weeks before then, a child brought in a caterpillar in a jar, as happens very often in kindergarten classrooms, right? And we fed that caterpillar. We made sure that very hungry caterpillar stayed fed. And every day they check it and, and look at it and wonder what was going to happen next. And, and then it happened. We came in one morning and there was a chrysalis that, that the, the caterpillar had formed. And then we started watching and waiting. Lots of waiting with the chrysalis, right? Um, hoping to see what's going to come out of it. We know what's going to come, but the miracle of that. And we were inching towards the very last day of school, and I was very worried that this caterpillar, this chrysalis, was not going to happen, that the butterfly was not going to happen before that last day of school finished. And it was literally the last day of school, and one of the kids noticed this butterfly working its way out of this chrysalis. And so I knew that, you know, you can't touch them. Their, their wings have to dry out. What I didn't know, I just learned this, is that butterflies, when they come out, their wings are small, and they have um, lots of fluid in their abdomen that they push into their wings to help them grow, which is fascinating to me. 
And so we're watching, we're waiting. It's fluttering a little bit in the jar. And I know, when are we going to let it go? When are we going to let it go? And so we finally, kind of towards the end of the day, we have lots of things we had to do to get ready as they were getting ready to go home for the year. We go outside and we open the jar. Butterfly won't leave the jar. So I turn it sideways and I kind of help it out a little bit. And, and it kind of edges to the end of the jar, kind of gets in the grass a little bit. And the kids all of a sudden start crying. Come on, butterfly. You can do it. You can do it. And it would float a little bit farther out into the grass, kind of stretching its wings. And come on, butterfly. You got this. You can do it. And finally, this butterfly takes off. And the kids are running after it, saying, bye, butterfly. And it was one of those moments, right? Just one of those moments of pure joy that we get to experience with children. Sit there watching the joy of childhood and, and wonder and smiling at their amazement at the whole thing, and thanking God that it happened before school was out, because I'd been really worried about that. And it wasn't until later that it hit me, the correlation of this butterfly taking flight on the last day of school, my last day of school, before going off into what God was calling me to do next. And I remember when that moment clicked, that it just stopped me in my stopped. And I felt so amazingly connected to God in that moment. While it didn't happen right in that moment, I was still, it, I just I felt it. I knew I had encountered the holy even later. And I was so filled with so many different emotions when that happened. I'm, I was filled with wonder and a little bit of kind of fear and, whoa, wait a second, this is way too weird. Filled with love, amazement, and feeling so small in this giant world. Feeling that love, feeling gratitude, awe. Something so much bigger than I am. So when that baby was eight days old, Zachariah and Elizabeth had gathered with all their friends and family to circumcise the baby. And it's at that moment in their community of faith and their tradition that the baby would be named. And it was just assumed that this baby would be named Zechariah because he was the firstborn son. He was, they get named after their father. But Elizabeth jumps in and says, no, 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 wait a second. His name is John. And the relatives were confused. And they motioned to Zechariah, is this true? Are you serious? Now remember, Zechariah still can't speak. He has been mute for at least nine months after showing doubt to that angel who said that they would have a baby because he thought they were too old. So he motions, he's like, give me a tablet so I can write it down. And he wrote, his name is John. And the scripture says they were amazed. Now, I'm really not so sure about what they were amazed at in that moment, to be honest. Was their amazement tied in with this confusion about how the tradition was being broken and that, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did this? Were they amazed that Zechariah actually backed his wife up and said, oh no, his name is John? Because it wasn't until Zechariah, it was later that Zechariah was able to speak again. So that amazement wasn't in that moment. Then it says his mouth was open, his tongue freed, and he started praising God. But as Zechariah started praising God, it says that fear came over their neighbors. And everyone was talking about what happened. Do you hear what happened in that kid's circumcision? Oh my gosh. Do you know what happened with Zechariah and Elizabeth's baby? 
or what happened with Zechariah? And oh my gosh, they named him John. And then, and then Zechariah was able to speak again. And you just know that gossip mill is working, right? Because it even says that they talked about it throughout the entire hill country of Judea. This was a big deal. And they began to ask the question, what then will this child become? What does this mean? Who is this kid? And they knew, it says, that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Amazement, possibly some disbelief, wonder, fear, curiosity, certainty, Connection with God, joy, all of these emotions, I'm sure, were happening. They all seem tied up together, don't they? I'm going to start small, and, and then it grows into something a little bit larger. As Reverend Cecilia Armstrong says in her commentary um, on the scripture that we'll be reading for this coming week in our Advent devotional, she says, when we are amazed, we tend to share the news either seeking validation that it is shocking news or to witness the shock factor the news has on others. Isn't that what a lot of our gossip is about? Either I need some validation that I'm right and everybody else sees this crazy thing happening or, oh my gosh, did you know? And trying to get the shock value out of another person. You need to know that we're not imagining it. That others believe that we, we had that holy encounter, that we had that moment. What about those smaller moments? So I remember in later years, um, I was working in a hospital as a chaplain. I was in clinical pastoral education. just means that we had classes in the midst of working in the hospital and had to write a lot of paper. But I was writing a reflection paper, and it was, I was really struggling in that moment in my life, and I had a lot of questions. And I had this nudge to Google what happens in a cocoon in a chrysalis. Now, I had always just assumed that that caterpillar somehow transformed and his legs, I don't know what happened, but, but the body of the caterpillar became that um, body of the butterfly, and then, you know, it grew some wings. Did you know that actually what happens inside a chrysalis is that that caterpillar completely disintegrates into goo, just goo. And then, out of that goo, the butterfly emerges and is formed. And I had this epiphany in that moment, and this moment of awe, that out of this complete disintegration, this goo, this messiness of life, God does something amazing. It's a simple Google search. Any other person might just see it as a cool scientific fact. And yet when I stopped and I paid attention, in that moment, it was so much bigger. It was a small encounter with the whole world. Have you ever had those moments when that amazement just kind of overwhelms you? The beauty of the trees right now, if you take a drive. The pride of a child when she reads that first book for herself. The kindness of someone taking the cart in the parking lot for us so that we don't have to go find the place to put it. The smell of a cup of coffee on first thing in the morning. Maybe it's even pausing to see the bigger things. The colors of an incredible sunset, the, the stars when we're out of town away from the city lights, standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon. Pictures from the Hubble telescope. Check this out. Is this not amazing? This is our, this is beyond, it's just it. when we allow ourselves to be amazed. What happens when, when we are looking for things that cause feelings of awe? When we notice those small or those large things around us and stand amazed at what our God is doing? requires this posture of, of paying attention and then saying yes when that wonder just kind of pours over us. It awakens the numbness in us. It renews our dull senses. 
Some researchers even believe that awe-induced events may be one of the fastest and most powerful methods of personal change and growth. And surprisingly, that can then turn into joy. Researcher Brene Brown in her book, The Atlas of the Heart, defines joy as an intense feeling of deep spiritual connection, pleasure, appreciation. Deep spiritual connection. Joy is different than happiness. Happiness is more fleeting. Brown defines happiness as related to the immediate environment, the current circumstances. I can be going through a really hard time in my life and I can appear happy. Sometimes that's hard. It's that deep joy that helps me put another foot in front of my heel. With God, with joy, we feel it in our souls, this deep, deep connection with our God. And when we think about it, joy, as I mentioned earlier, then leads to gratitude. In fact, Brown points out that researchers describe the relationship between joy and gratitude as an intriguing upward spiral. Intriguing upward spiral. What a great image. The opposite of that downward spiral that we often find ourselves, right? When we just kind of keep going down and further down and further down. So think for a moment. We, we find ourselves in this weary world and, and we allow ourselves to be amazed at something. And we practice being amazed. And it then leads to joy, feeling of deep connection with God, and it leads to gratitude, which spirals into rejoicing. The Gospel of Luke really emphasizes amazement. This word appears 15 times within 24 chapters. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them, and the child's father and mother were amazed at what, he, what was being said about him. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. Chapter 8, he said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and water and they obey him? Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the one who had been mute spoke and the crowds were amazed. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. It occurs 11 more times in the book of Acts, which was written by the same author. It was intentionally used. It was not just accidentally put there. It was used to try and capture this, this surprise, this wonder, this fear, this awe that happens when we realize we are encountering something bigger than ourselves, when we are encountering the sacred. Do you ever stand in awe and in in the form of a baby and grew up right on this earth. Do you ever just get amazed by that? I wonder what ha might happen if we, if we practice some of this intentionality of being amazed this week. When we keep our eyes open and we're in this attitude of paying attention I wonder if we might find ourselves in that upward spiral, spiral that leads to rejoicing. Can't hurt to try, can it? Will you join me in doing that this week? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite Stephanie Dester up to lead us.
Jesus and our affirmation of faith. Our affirmation will be a little bit different today. There is a response from the congregation that comes. All right. Just a second. It's different. And I'm reading the not bold, correct? Okay, here we go. We believe in a God who knows our names, who counts the hair on our heads and carries the dreams in our hearts. Is it going? Okay. It doesn't matter. We believe that God's fingerprints are all over creation and that God is forever speaking to us in a million different ways. We believe that awe and wonder, goosebumps and laughter, telling stories and paying attention are all ways that we can say thank you to our creating, sustaining, and loving God. Therefore, we commit ourselves to moving through this world with eyes wide open, with porous hearts, and grateful spirits, we commit ourselves to living lives of awe, wonder, and gratitude, trusting that these things will forever draw us deeper into God's loving arms. We believe, we stand in awe, thanks be to God. I apologize for some of the confusion in our slides this week. <laughs> we'll get it straight. Um, if you are looking for a church home, we would love to welcome you. If you want to come down during this closing hymn, um, you are welcome to, and we can introduce you to the congregation, or feel free to have a conversation with me out in the foyer following the service. Um, as we stand together and sing um, powerful hymn of joy, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed.
couple of important things happening within our community of faith this coming week. Um, today, we will be caroling to some of our home-centered friends. Spoil alert to some of you online. Um, we'll meet at 2 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Come decked out. This is open to everyone. Um, if we have more people, then we can split in half and divide and conquer. Um, but uh, it will be a wonderful time of sharing uh, joy, sharing, sharing joy with those who are home-centered. On Tuesday night, we will be um, partnering with CCA, our school, um, to create these cocoa reindeer. Um, we'll make 500 of them. It's a fun little assembly line that all can participate in. There are jobs for people of all ages. Um, come and help and do that. Interact with our CCA families. All of those reindeer will then be donated to Center of Hope for their big Christmas event coming up. Um, on Wednesday, um, we will actually have our Holland Lake Christmas shop. Um, I know a number of people have brought some things. People have donated money, and Nancy is taking care of all of that. Um, that will be from 9 a.m. to noon if you want to come. Um, the residents of Holland Lake get to shop um, from what we bring for their loved ones because they can't always get out. If you have any questions or would like to help see Nancy, um, right down here. Uh, on Saturday, Mobile Food Pantry at South Main Church of Christ. We are responsible for, for the Flying the, the people power for that. Um, our youth are a part of that, but so is this entire congregation. So please feel free to meet there at South Main Church of Christ at 8 a.m. And then next Sunday at 6 p.m., we'll have our normal worship service in the morning. At 6 p.m., we'll have our service of healing. I'm sorry, our service of hope. Um, our ser of hope and wholeness and healing, um, especially for those who are struggling uh, through this holiday season. And then finally, on Christmas Eve, just so as a reminder, there will be no Sunday school. Um, we will have our regular worship. We will have Christmas Eve worship at both 10.30 and 7 p.m. It will be the same service. Um, so come to one of them or come to both. It's wonderful to see the sanctuary in the daytime and it's beautiful to see it at nighttime. Um, all will have candles and communion. We receive this benediction. Go forth in peace. Peace as you've been taught. To serve as you have been served, to love as you have been loved, as a beloved child of God. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. 